Hello and welcome to another Unity tutorial. Uh, this one is going to be a very, very short one. I'm going to call these quick bits for no particular reason. They're just a bit of a tutorial and a quick. Uh, this one we're going to go over how to make a very simple dynamic crosshair. So that's um, if you're in like a first or third person shooter and you have the crosshair, you're aiming crosshair. This is like where, how to do a simple version of one of those where it adjusts the size of the reticle based on whether you're moving or aiming or whatever um so <clears throat> i've created a nice little level here i've got uh, i've just used the uh, the standard assets some prototype assets and the first person controller so if you want to set anything up like this just use the standard assets the beauty of this is that it will very easily drop into if you've got your own game using your own assets it's not a big deal to drop this into it so the first thing we want to do is create ourselves a ui element uh which is down here and we're going to use a panel. And then in that panel, we'll just switch this to 2D view so we can see what's going on. And then in the panel, we're going to get rid of the image. We do not need that. And we're going to switch this to center anchored. Uh, the anchor points are in the middle already. So that means that as long as these positions are zero, this image will be in the uh, center. This panel will be in the center of the screen. We're going to give it, uh, it doesn't really matter for now. Uh, 100 by 100. Now what does matter is what we do inside this panel. So we're going to create an image. Um, right now it's set to 100 by 100. Now what we need to do with this is anchor it center top. Uh, we'll set this to 1. So this means that this image is now anchored 0, 0 which puts it at the top in the middle. If we change this to 0 then it will be anchored at the bottom but this one is going to be the top, so we want it to be one. We're going to set the width to, we'll say two, and then the height, uh, twenty-five. Um, yeah, twenty-five. You can play around with these. These are entirely preference values. You can play around with these as you, at your will. So we need another four of these. Uh, the names for this really don't matter, uh, but we'll just call it top reticle line. Uh, this one we want to anchor at the bottom So um, We change this to be anchored down here set that to zero and as you can see it's now anchored at the bottom That was actually the top line, but it's fine. We can just rename this And then rename this Now these two, we need to change, we need to flip the white width and height because these are going to be sideways bars and obviously we want to anchor it to the side set this um, anchor point to 0 this one to 0 0.5 and then 0 and 0 and you can't really see that because of the sky but uh, I'll just um, just for the sake of this I'll just move this down a little bit or up a little bit <laughs> or in any way that will show you that there is a line there. <laughs> Maybe I should have used a different background. Trust me, there's a line there. <clears throat> so that one is the left reticle line. I'm sorry about the weather if you can hear that, but the rain is beating against my window right now. And then finally, we'll just delete that and then duplicate this one. And this will be right reticle line. And then, as you may have guessed, we're going to anchor this to the right, set the pivot point to 1, and we should have, and set that to 0, and then we should have a light, there, oh, there you go, you can see it on here. So there we have a simple four-pointed reticle crosshair thing. And like I say, it's entirely, what you do within this square, within this, um, in fact, we'll call it reticle, just so we know what we're dealing with, Whatever you do within that square is entirely up to your preference how you want it to look. The important thing is, if you want it to move, how we're going to make it move is that it needs to be anchored to the sides. So you could have um, you could have little square corner pieces as well, as long as they were anchored to the corners. You could have a center dot that didn't move, as long as it was anchored to the center. The important thing is that everything is anchored to this uh, reticle panel that we've created. So now we're going to make ourselves a script. Um, you know what? Let's. Uh, 
I know it's only a short video, but let's do everything neatly. Create a scripts folder. Script, and we're just going to call it reticle. We'll open that up. So the first thing we're going to need to do is use the UI class, because we need to deal with the UI elements that we've got here. And we're going to take in public rec transform, uh, and we'll just call it reticle with a lowercase, because obviously we've called our main class reticle, so we don't want to get mixed up with those. And then we will put this on our reticle. And you know, actually, let's, we don't need it to be public. Pivot. Just make things a little bit neater in the inspector. It's on the same uh, game object, so we don't need to worry about finding the component. We know it's there. <coughs> so, now that we have... That should, disa that should disappear, yep. So, we're going to need a... Uh, what we'll do, just to quickly show it working, we're going to take in a float. We'll just call it size. And then we're going to create an update. And then in here, all we're going to do is we're going to set our reticle size, uh, reticle dot size delta, and it's going to equal a new vector two size by size. And then, just so we can quickly see it in action, we'll give this a range. Um, we'll call it. We'll go from fifty to 250 and then if we go into here and we test this we should be able to adjust there we go so all we're doing is modifying the size of that panel which because all the points are anchored to it it drags them with it very nice and simple so all we need to do now is uh, attach our player movement to it somehow. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. The easiest and most obvious way is just a quick check on the inputs. So what we need to do is, uh, first of all, we need to get rid of this. This isn't gonna work for us anymore. So we're gonna need a public float, we'll call it resting size, uh, a public float max size. So that's the size when you're not moving and the, si and the maximum size it will get when you are moving. Uh, we'll take in a speed value just so we can adjust how quickly the reticle moves in and out and then finally we need a private placeholder float which is just for keeping track of the current reticle size then in our update what we need to do now is somehow take our players movement into account there's a couple of ways you can do this I'm going to show you two of them one of them is you can run a check um, so what we'll do is we'll just create a quick bull here uh, bull um, we've got is moving, uh, and we'll just we'll use get set. And all we're going to do is, is if uh, input dot get axis horizontal does not equal not or input dot get axis vertical does not equal not and let's go the whole hog or input dot get axis mouse x so we can take in our um, mouse value as well so looking around we should also affect not just moving does not equal not and then finally if input dot get axis mouse y does not equal not so if all those, if any of those values come back false, then we're going to return false because that means in some way a player is moving. Have I missed a bracket here? What's going on here? 
sometimes it does help to break things out onto different lines. So we shall do that here. Ah, yes. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes, if only for your own benefit, <laughs> it helps to break things out into multiple lines just to read things clearer. Uh, and then, otherwise, we return true. Oh, no, sorry, that's the wrong way around. If it, any of them come back, um, if any of those conditions are true, that means the player is moving in some way. So we return true. Otherwise, we return false. So up here, just a simple if is moving we are going to lerp our current size equals mathf dot lerp uh, rest no sorry current size to our max size and then time dot delta time times speed so that's taking delta time if you're not aware uh, is the time since the last frame. So, uh, time in seconds, sorry. So it's gonna return a value of something like 0 0.015, depending on how many frames per second you're currently getting. So if you ever wanted to count in seconds, you could keep track of time dot delta time, add it up every frame, and then when it cr crosses one, that's one second. So time dot delta time, time speed. And obviously our speed value will be able to set. So the higher we set that, the quicker the reticle will move. And if it's not, then we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to be lerping from whatever the current size is to the resting size. And then once we've done that, we want to set our reticle.size delta to a new vector2 current size by current size. And then if we go over here, we should have some values we can change. Uh, resting size we will put at, uh, again, these are all a matter of preference. Uh, we'll have it at 75. Max size we'll have at 250. And speed for now we'll just put as 2. And if we press play, we should have, there we go, a dynamic crosshair. That's nice. Uh, and just to quickly show you another way we could do it, um, just in case you don't want to tie whether or not the player is moving to inputs like we've done here, uh, we'll just quickly take in public rigid body, and then we're going to pass in our player's rigid body component. And then instead of is moving, we're going to say if rb dot velocity dot square magnitude does not equal zero oops does not equal zero then we do all our stuff so it's it's a little less responsive because it takes longer for rigid body velocity to get back to zero but it works essentially the same way and we can change, we can make it work quicker. But there you have it. That's a simple dynamic crosshair. I really should have used some better colors for the level, but you get the idea. Uh, if you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. Um, I'll have more videos, including more of the Minecraft videos. I'm not, don't worry, this video doesn't mean I've given up on them. And that's that. Um, if you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, it just It's just a sign that you want me to do more of these. Don't worry, I haven't given up on the Minecraft tutorials. This was just a nice quick little thing in between just to break things up a bit. Uh, and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.